first question is about the merger. What was the master plan behind it? Okay. Uh, despite the fact that it kind of surprised all of us engineers, I think both at the Hortonworks and Cloudera side, uh, later on as you know, more details were revealed about the preparations of the merger, uh, it seemed a, a quite obvious move that we should have been doing this uh, maybe even a long time before uh, this January. Uh, according to our management, there has been talks a couple of times actually in the past three years about potential emerging Hortonworks and Cloudera. And the main rationale behind is that we are uh, working and contributing to a very similar code base. We both work in Apache uh, open source projects in the big data uh, space. Uh, we have a complementary set of uh, customers, but we are solving very similar problems uh, to these customers. And on top of all, uh, we have complementary products. So Hortonworks was traditionally very strong in the data in motion, real-time streaming uh, analytics space, whereas Cloudera made more investments in the machine learning and data science uh, side of the house whereas both companies have been pretty strong players in the data engineering and data warehousing uh, space with offerings around Spark and Hive. Um, so it was kind of fairly reasonable for us to uh, start collaborating uh, and joining forces instead of competing each other on a very similar market. Yeah, and if you think about it, it was really relational. Uh, to, to do that actually. Yeah. That is one of those examples when the merger is a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Not only for the both companies that are merging together, but also for the par partner ecosystem, for the customers as well. Because uh, like we mentioned during the plenary session today, uh, the actual uh, customer base was qu quite complementary, so there was not too much overlapping. Um, at the end, you, we end up with a situation where we have one clear market leader uh, with a nice uh, customer portfolio and very uh, strong uh, partner uh, portfolio as well. And um, for, for us, as a local partner, it means uh, it, it's, it's a really nice situation, actually. Was it a surprise for 3Soft? For th for th for yeah, definitely. We've been, uh, we've been working with Hortonworks for many years. Uh, last year, we've gained a uh, gold reseller status partner as the first company here in the Eastern Europe. And we've been working actively on many fields like uh, sales, marketing, engineering, and stuff like that. But uh, it, it was a bit surprising that maybe not not the fact that the merger is going to happen, but the pace that it was then progressing. So it was really uh, it was really uh, visible that is that there is some clear plan behind it, and it was planned months months uh, before. Um, but as I say, this is, this is really an opportunity for us. Uh, this is how we see it. J just to comment on the pace, uh, I think we, on the both sides of the companies, we made commitments that we're going to move very fast and we're going to be decisive. We're going to start making shots like early on in the merger. Uh, so the merger was announced, uh, I think, on the 3rd of October. And uh, like the pre-merger integration teams has already have already started working on, uh, you know, a unified roadmap. Uh, and as early as third of January, we have like legally completed the merger. And just four weeks later, on the thirty-first of January, we have announced uh, Cloudera Data Science Workbench being available on HDP. So we have already started kind of to uh, cross-enable our customers on both sides. Uh, to enjoy like benefits of the both worlds. And what about the name? Why Cloudera and not Hortonworks, for example? Uh, very candidly, I think um, it was around the 60-40 type of uh, equity um, you know, ratio between the two companies. So Cloudera had a little bit of upper hand you know, in corporate decisions like that. And we also heard commentary that given that both companies were like household names uh, in the open source and the big data space, it wouldn't uh, have made sense to come up with a completely new third name and start like branding ourselves from scratch. We could have wasted like a colossal amount of money on, you know, rebranding the company. So with this decision, we are going forward with one of the household names and we are only just kind of tidying up, you know, the, the look and feel of the new Cloudera brand. 
during your presentation you mentioned that you see uh, uh, a market from edge to AI and uh, so so but in this market has uh, cloud changed the landscape of the market how do you see it I think um, the Hadoop kind of innovators and contributors are bringing like a a big baggage of you know uh, not being cloud native traditionally and originally Hadoop was designed you know with data locality in mind with large on-prem uh, clusters in mind so there's a lot of kind of architectural decisions embedded you know with that mindset slowly of course this has started to change as the world was moving towards uh, cloud the way we see it, customers are looking for basically two big things when they choose uh, the cloud. One is elasticity, and in this new context, they are looking to scale uh, sometimes differently in terms of storage and in terms of compute. So that's something that the cloud can naturally provide, and that's not something that Hadoop could traditionally solve um, as a problem. So that's one challenge that we are investing in uh, as we speak. And the other one is ease of use. So the reason why a lot of the enterprises do love cloud is the usability and the level of service that they get. They don't have to deal with, you know, administrating Linux servers and, you know, deploying, installing or upgrading clusters themselves, but they can consume high level services that they are interested in. Yeah, and definitely there's one more aspect when you think about the the cloud offering of the cloud vendors when it comes to big data tools. Uh, <coughs> you could easily imagine that there is a Hadoop ecosystem launched in the cloud. But then this data locality aspect take, takes place. And what we usually hear from our customers is that, uh, for example, when they use Hadoop to uh, automate their AI models at scale, uh, they would like to leverage the newest possible versions of the frameworks, the tools, the libraries they use for solving the AI problems. And that means that the cloud providers that were trying for years to integrate Hadoop in some kind of EAS or PaaS model, uh, usually were lagging behind a little bit with those offerings. That, that meant that, for example, for data scientists, uh, it was always a little bit... Uh, a little bit outdated uh, to use the tooling that was offered in the cloud versus what was offered uh, on-prem. The other story is uh, how the customers which are operating on the regulated market, uh, markets uh, need to be solving their reg regulatory issues. Uh, cloud sometimes doesn't help, uh, which means that yeah, having, having uh, already invested in many uh, clusters which are running on-prem uh, with uh, security and enterprise-grade features like disaster recovery, um, which is really uh, costly at, at the beginning especially, but that's, that's the price for the enterprise security that we pay. Uh, journey towards the cloud should be uh, rather strategical. Uh, it's not something that you can rush with. What we observe is that our customers, especially these from the regulated markets, uh, they really prepare for that uh, many months, if not years. So they organize the strategic uh, workshop, the strategic uh, initiatives with very clear roadmap, how the cloud could be adopted and what are actually the risks associated with that, how to mitigate them. Uh, everything uh, needs to be really, really well, well prepared in that journey. Okay, the last question is about the, the Polish market. How, what are your plans towards the Polish market? Uh, do you plan to work with uh, trusted partners like Treesoft? Absolutely, so uh, we have been traditionally very strong in partnering up with local and regional vendors and you know ISVs and uh, technology providers and consultants. Um, the new cloud there is actually stronger than ever here in the uh, Eastern Europe European region. Uh, we have a large Budapest office where actually both Legacy Hortonworks and Legacy Cloud are uh, present. So now this combined entity has 300 people working in that office, out of which around 200 are engineers working on our core technologies. So the proximity to, you know, Srisoft and Katowice uh, helps us to kind of 
uh, find the synergies of you know sales and consulting capabilities present and three soft that we can help with the engineering uh, brain power that we have in Budapest to support you know at a deep level. Yeah, as I mentioned, for a local partner, this is really. Uh, we, we are now in a really nice situation because of the merger, as I say. Uh, last year, we've, we've been working heavily on uh, making this partnership on the gold level uh, viable for both companies. We have common success in the sales area on the Polish market already. Uh, this year, we increased the volume uh, of, of common business. Uh, but we really see that having uh, the Horton Works as a brand opening the office in Warsaw last year, now, joined with the whole Caldera potential, this is really, really a uh, great situation for us as a local partner. Uh, we would like to keep our, our, our status of the, of the focus partner, so the one that is locally uh, considered to be working with uh, the, the most uh, valuable customers of Caldera. And what we do uh, is, of course, investing in that relationship with, with Caldera heavily. So uh, both in sales area, where we work back-to-back, uh, uh, but also in the engineering field. That's why our engineers exchange uh, the thoughts, uh, the ideas. I'm really happy uh, about the meeting that we had in Budapest, for example, last time, talking about what is actual direction of development of the components. And on the other hand, that your engineers had the opportunity to hear how the customers are using these tools that you develop in the field, uh, which I believe can be also beneficial for the people that develop those components to feel that uh, this is the right direction to go and what they do is then uh, used for really amazing projects. Okay, thank you for the interview. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>